mini LED technology. Now you've probably heard of it already and you probably already know it's amazing, but the problem is it often comes with a premium price tag. Recently though, it seems like manufacturers have been able to reduce the cost to a point where it's kind of becoming much more affordable, as in under 500 US dollars for a mini LED TV affordable. Like this one, for example, the Hisense U6N. And I've been searching for a second TV to go in my media room and finally replace my aging Hisense LCD TV from 2016. Seems like Hisense saw me feature that old TV in a previous video and felt sorry for me because they reached out to sponsor this video. So thanks Hisense. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna go through the unboxing and setup process, as well as give you my initial impressions and thoughts around buying and using a $500 mini LED TV in 2024. Now, quick side note here, I'm in Australia, so my specific model is the U6NAU, and there are a few minor differences to the US version, the U6N, but I'll mention those when they come up later. So let's get this bad boy out of the box. First up, there are two metal stand legs. The rest of the accessories include a remote with a lot of shortcut buttons to popular streaming platforms up the top, and it comes with batteries included, which was nice. It also acts as a voice control microphone. Next, we have a power cable, audio splitter cable, P-clip, and of course, a quick setup guide. Now, design-wise, the U6N obviously comes in a variety of sizes. This one is the 55-inch version, but there's also 65, 75, and 85-inch versions. Now, I went with 55 inches because it's going in a smaller room, and I'm also probably going to be moving it around the house a bit, so I want it to be somewhat compact. For placement options, you can of course mount it on your wall using the Visa screw holes on the back, or like I mentioned before, it comes with a stand. It's a pretty basic stand, but it's foolproof to install. Just slot it into the bracket, use two screws to attach it, and repeat for the other side. Now, I do prefer this particular stand method versus some other TVs that have it in the middle because you can have stuff underneath the middle of the TV like a set-top box or thin soundbar. There are also cable management brackets built into the stand. Note the US version has a slightly different stand design, but functionally, they're the same. Aesthetically, the design is pretty minimal and simple. There are bezels on the sides, but they're not too big with a slightly larger one at the bottom. Moving to the back and taking a look at port selection, there's a decent amount of connectivity, particularly for audio. My Australian model has three HDMI 2.1 ports with ALLM and variable refresh rate. The US version is similar, but gets an additional HDMI port and is WISA ready. Both models also get two USB media ports and an antenna port. There's a digital audio out port, AV in and audio out ports, and one of the HDMI ports has eARC if you want to connect a sound bar or something. I was also pleasantly surprised to see an ethernet port here as well. Now I'm someone that likes to have all of my devices connected to my network via ethernet cables. I know a bit old school, but you know, otherwise it does have Wi-Fi built in. Now the setup process is pretty straightforward. It asked me to connect to my Wi-Fi network, which I did. There's also an option to create a VIDA account and choose which voice service I want to use. This is also probably the biggest difference between my Australian model and the US model. For US users, the operating system will be different. It'll be Google TV instead of VIDA, which means you'll get Google Assistant as your voice control system instead. Regardless of if you have VIDA or Google TV, functionally they accomplish the exact same thing, giving you access to all the popular streaming apps, etc. Now I found on my version, all of the streaming apps loaded quite quickly. And so far I haven't even plugged in my Apple TV and I don't think I ever will. Not to mention there's also Apple AirPlay built in. So now we can actually check out the screen and see how it performs. And do note that this is just an unboxing and first look and not a review. All of that stuff will come later on once I've owned this thing for a few months. So the U6N screen has a 4K resolution and it uses mini LED backlight technology. And if you're not familiar with how mini LED works, it's essentially an improvement upon LED technology, except it uses way more LEDs that are also smaller, hence the name mini. And this is supposed to produce super sharp contrast and realistic colors while also improving dimming zones so black and darker scenes look much darker. 
Now, one big advantage of mini LED is that it can also produce extremely bright images, which is helpful for daytime viewing in brighter rooms, which is exactly where I wanna have this TV located. Hisense have also combined mini LED technology with a number of other features like quantum dot color to make colors more vivid and lifelike, their high view engine, a scene by scene intelligent processor that analyzes each frame to improve image quality, total HDR solution, allowing compatibility with all major HDR formats, and something called total ambient adaptive technology to match the brightness and colors of the TV to the room. Now, one area where mini LED can sometimes struggle is when displaying darker scenes or colors due to the backlight. Hisense claims their dynamic tone mapping feature greatly improves this by analyzing each frame and adjusting over 2,000 separate dimming zones in real time. I watched a bunch of content and played some games with darker scenes, and it seemed to do a good job of portraying the deeper blacks. Gamers also get a few nice features like variable refresh rate, low latency MEMC, and game mode plus to tweak and customize game specific settings on the TV. Note that you US users are really lucky because you actually get 120 hertz high refresh rate versus the standard 60 hertz on the Australian model. Now, personally, I'm fine with 60 hertz because I'm only ever playing more chilled games on this TV uh, because my gaming PC is where I play all the competitive FPS stuff. There's also AI sports mode, which sharpens sports content for easier viewing and isolates commentator voice so it's easier to understand. Voice control is also a cool feature to have and all I had to do was just press a button on the remote and speak into it. So overall, my experience with a you know, sub $500 mini LED TV in 2024 has been pretty positive overall and I'm looking forward to finally finishing off this media room. Now, if you're looking for one of the best cost-effective mini LED TVs under 500 bucks, I'll just provide links to the Hisense U6N down in the description below. The current price is available during Hisense's Independence Day campaign and Amazon Prime Day from July 1st to July 21st. If you're watching this after that date, I'll still provide some links down below to the best prices that I could find.